and welcome back to the channel. Kinder Knight here, and we are back with another video from Dukesboro, the fortified city portion to Castle Gwynhild. And in today's episode, we are gonna be getting on with some more building progression within the city walls here, namely the tavern and inn. But real quick, I would really, really appreciate it if you guys did me a solid and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, as it obviously helps in growing the channel, and I would love your support. And so here we're looking at the current layout for the new addition that will be added in today's video. Although in today's time lapse, we'll just be focusing on the tavern and inn portion of the build itself, as well as its history and lore. I hope you guys don't mind too much and let's go ahead and get started. The fourth lodge in one of Dukesboro's oldest standing buildings with its original construction dating back to sometime around the founding and great construction work of Castle Gwynhild. Much like the first, the second, and third lodges, the fourth lodge was built out of necessity to house and shelter the skilled craftsmen as well as lesser skilled laborers who had traveled from all parts of the continent of Colossia. Headed by the Masons, the original building was thrown up fairly quick in a hurry with it being built with materials that was readily available and could be sourced from around the building site. With that mostly consisting of sandstone and rubble and the original roof being of thatch. Sometime after the completion of the castle, most of the skilled craftsmen and laborers had already returned home to their own respective countries or moved on for other work opportunities elsewhere, leaving the lodges they once occupied in disarray and in need of maintenance. Over the next few decades, the city would see a boon in its populational growth, contributing to the completion of the fortified walls of the city that was just completed a decade earlier. Due to the heavy expense for repairs and a hefty plot tax, another two decades would pass with the fourth lodge and many older buildings like it still sitting unoccupied and in a state of much needed repairs. With the occasional squatters, vagrants, and gang of bandits making it their home or base of operations, the Lord of Dukesboro decided he did not want such a building to sully the reputation of his city. He would then have the building cleared of any unlawful inhabitants and have the building auctioned off and sold at a reduced rate to any law-abiding citizen willing to occupy and make the needed repairs. The building was eventually bought by a well-off merchant who amassed a small fortune through imports and exports of goods, seeing an opportunity to capitalize on a new business venture. Within a year's time, the well-off merchant had made most of the needed repairs, including a new tile roof. He then opened the doors to his newly founded tavern, which he named the Flow and Foam. He would go on to run the tavern for many years, well on into his old age. But due to his greed and what many would consider as unethical business practices, the tavern's patronage saw a massive decline, putting the tavern's owner on the brink of bankruptcy. Due to the severe lack of customers, which some would say contributing to the owner's watering down of the ale, and the overcharging for the poor quality of food and drink. Having fallen deep into debt, the tavern owner wagered the deed to the tavern in a game of cards in an attempt to win some money to pay off some of his debts, but instead losing his tavern, leaving him ruined and completely penniless. After winning the deed, the gambler, not having any desire to own or run a tavern, much less make it profitable again. After holding on to the deed for quite some time, he eventually sold it for a modest sum to a particular young man whose parents were of the lesser nobility class. With him being the youngest, he would not be able to inherit it, the title and modest land holdings his parents possessed. And so with the small fortune his parents did leave him, seeing exactly what the tavern could be, he invested his entire inheritance into the purchasing the renovating and revamping of the old tavern. New additions include purchasing the larger next door lot for expansion of the main inn, which would house his patrons with comfortable accommodations and clean indoor and outdoor seating, as well as an indoor stage built for nightly performances. And to top it off, he would serve only the best quality of food and drink, ale never watered down, and for a third of the price. At last, the business had finally turned itself completely around and it had become very profitable, with the place being jam-packed every night with paying patrons. The young noble would soon change the name of the place from the Flow and Foam 
to the Silver Spoon Tavern and Inn. And so there you guys go. A little bit of history, a little bit of lore behind this building on the purpose it serves and how it fits into this world. But I'm going to go ahead and let this time lapse finish out. And afterwards, we'll be back as usual for the tour. Okay guys, we are back and as you can see we are right outside our finished product here, the Silver Spoon Tavern and Inn, as well as these three buildings over here that I added off camera. And now I know that I've been told before that I have a tendency of sometimes cutting out a lot of my time lapse progression out of my videos and that I don't show enough of the building process. And to those, I want to apologize. What I have to say, for me, it's just easier to build and allow those creative juices to flow when I know I don't have to worry about uh, the camera. It's just that, that way I am able to just spend a little bit of time on a build, then when I'm out of ideas, I could take a quick break and come back refreshed with some fresh new ideas without having to worry about a ton of clips to go through and edit from continually stopping the replay mod. So uh, for when I do wanna take a break, but it really just allows me to just really take my time and really put that uh, love and care into the build. But I do apologize to those of you who do uh, prefer to see the entire uh, time-lapse build and I hope you can forgive me. But anyhow, this is the new addition here with these three houses that were added to this section. They really help to add towards building up a lot of that atmosphere to this little section of the build. We won't be checking them out or touring them in this episode though. But however, we will be focusing on the Silver Spoon Tavern and Inn here. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we come to this kind of raised platform with some outdoor seating. This would be uh, would have been one of the new renovation features the young noble would have had added. And you know, you can also kind of say it kind of serves as a way to keep the inside of the tavern and inn fairly clean from extra dirt and mud that could be more easily tracked inside if it wasn't for this raised platform here. While also providing customers with a nice place to sit if they so choose an outdoor table. And as you can see, there's plenty of places to sit and just relax outside on a nice uh, sunny day. So now let's go ahead and move on and take the tour inside. We'll go ahead and make our way to the door here. So now stepping inside, we have what I would say or what I would call as far as medieval goes as a very welcoming atmosphere. Really love how it turned out with all the little details, very rustic feel, keeping in mind that over a century ago, this place would have served as the stonemason's lodge, but it has undergone quite a bit of changes as it passed through the hands of each owner. This tavern does provide plenty of accommodating seating. so for anyone that wants to sit inside, shouldn't find or have too much of an issue uh, finding a place to sit down and have a meal or a drink. I like to think by the time the young noble became the place's owner, one of his main concerns would have been to make this place as comfortable for his patrons as possible. And real quick, a little detail that ties into some of the lore. Looking around, you guys might notice a lot of these little pamphlets and notices and posters all around the building as well as on the ground you'll see the little pamphlets all scattered about on the floors they are not entirely there just for atmosphere purposes but it would be one of the effective ways the young noble would advertise the silver spoon services and try to drive in more paying customers by posting uh, these pamphlets and notices all around the city and inside the Silver Spoon Tavern and Inn. I would imagine that they would have deals or specials that the Silver Spoon would be running for the week as well as the posters of those who would serve as the stage entertainment for the night or for the week. But making our way on, we're going to go ahead and move through this part of the tavern and we come to the food preparation area where the stove is. Now, it isn't much of a kitchen setup, but it works. We have a place to cook some food, a place to bake some fresh bread. As you can see, if you want some soup, you can have some soup or maybe some meat 
that is being cooked over on the stove. But if we make our way over here, we have some pantry shelves where some ingredients can be pulled to cook those meals. And over here, what's kind of considered the diamond in the rough, a big contributor in turning this business back around and getting those daily and nightly paying customers back, we have this stage for performers, where again, a troupe of actors or musicians can come and perform their art for the paying guests and provide them with much needed entertainment while they enjoy their meals. Because hey, who doesn't like a good show and dine? We also have these little fire pits all around to keep the place heated and warm. I think it all came out really, really well. I'm really happy with the little bit of details I was able to add, such as the broken glass bottles on the floor here, as well as some of the uh, mugs or tankards and just the little pamphlets all scattered about. It really creates a really tavern and warm atmosphere, I think. And you know, that's very important to me is the atmosphere. I really strive to create something authentic and realistic as best as I can. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the end portion of the build. If you're fortunate enough to afford a room here, then you would make your way up to this level. It's kind of another accommodating area where guests can come and sit and have a drink or have um, some food brought up to them, maybe more so the more posh type guests that may uh, stay here. We have this little seating here where uh, some guests can sit by the window and play a game, as well as over here we have another window seating area where uh, some guests can play some checkers. So again, very comfortable, very accommodating. After all, it is called the Silver Spoon Tavern and Inn, so I guess our young noble who owns the place really strives to live up to that name. Also, we have some braziers on each corner of the room to kind of add and help keep the room uh, cozy and warm. We do have this upstairs portion here, but we're not going to check that out quite yet. So we're going to go ahead and make our way down this hallway. And now these are the rooms where our guests would stay. And now we're not going to check out each and every one of these rooms because they're all generally the same with slight variations. So we're going to just go ahead and open this door and take a peek inside the room. And as you guys can see, it's not that um, astounding, I guess. It's not that, you know, done up. And that's okay because I just wanted to just kind of create an atmosphere where it's simple, and but it's clean, you know. So most people wouldn't have accommodations this nice and this clean. If you guys remember uh, the last episode where we toured the stables uh, portion, the end portion of the stables, as you can see, this is definitely an upgrade compared to that where you have a chest right there for some storage, some uh, cabinetry there for some storage. You have a nice bed that's off the ground. The room is generally clean and best of all, you have your privacy. You have a door where you can close it and have your privacy. So there you have it. You know, the rooms are fairly simple and they're all pretty much arranged in the same way. But I think we can go ahead and just check out one more room here. There's no point in checking them all out, but we'll just go ahead and check another one out. And as you see, we have a nice double bed or a nice big bed that's off the ground. It's nice and clean. We have a chest for some storage here. We have a table here in the corner where we can have some food in our room, as well as some books up there on that shelf for any of the clientele that uh, enjoys to read or can read. So that's that. And now this whole section that we're exploring and will be exploring is all part of the renovations that the young uh, noble would have done. So he would have bought in the lot that this part of the build sits on to have this whole structure built to add these rooms for his uh, potential uh, clientele or guests or patrons, paying customers, whoever, um, you know, would use his services. And as you see, we have a nice little sitting area here. We got some cabinetry right there. And if we make our way back this way and we come out this door, we have this nice balcony where the customers that would be staying here can come out and just have a nice view of the city and their surroundings. So that's that. So let's go ahead and make our way back inside. And now we can check out a room or two on this section. And now the uh, rooms on this floor are generally a little bigger and a little nicer. Um, again, we have those pamphlets and posters on the wall there as well so let's go ahead and check out this first room on this floor and as you can see again we have a, a bit of a nicer room i would say with a, a table a bigger table we have some floral decorations in here we have more windows so we have more views of the city a nice big comfy bed 
double chest on the floor and just generally speaking the room is just a little bit more uh, decorated a little bit better I think so let's go ahead and check out this room and again off the bat it's a little bit more spacious we have a little bit more windows so we get a little, little bit more uh, better light that's coming in the room we have a nice uh, rug on the floor a nice station over there to play some checkers and um, some nice uh, more a little bit more storage in this room as well as a bookshelf for some reading and we have that plant over there in the corner too so there you have it still very simple but at the same time for medieval means I think that's a nice accommodation so we're gonna go ahead and make our way up to this level and now this level would be where our young noble the owner of the silver spoon tavern would stay um, so as you can see off the bat it is really really nice and luxurious here he makes quite a good amount of coin running this tavern and inn and so he can live the life that he uh, was actually raised to his parents were nobles they were of the lesser noble class but he's still growing up probably had a measure of luxury as you can see he has a nicer bed some nice decorations around plenty of tables where uh, maybe his uh, servants can bring him food up to his room when he's not working downstairs he has plenty of uh, storage area where he can keep some books and some scrolls and I also made use of these little, um, I forget what they're called off the top of my head, but I'm using them as dividers to just kind of divide up the room a little bit to kind of, you know, add some type of division. We have some storage and where he keeps his clothes over there. And then we have this nice little setup around the fire here where he can sit down and relax after a long day and get warm and, you know, just you know feel good about his business because he did put in a lot of time and money and effort into making it profitable and now looking up we have those details in the ceiling with those nice big sturdy roof supports and beams and again we have that other little section up there where if we come around here well first we have this little area here where we got some logs to throw on throw into the fire but if we come up the stairs here we have this other little landing where we have some more tables and we have this little desk where the young lord would count and go over his expenses and you know how much money he may have made but the interesting part of this is if we go up this little area here he has this little kind of area heating system going on where we have some nice cushions and pillows and blankets on the floor where he can invite up some guests and they can just kind of sit around this thing and chat and have some drinks and just kind of relax I really like how this turned out. I think it really works and it really feels like it's a luxury room and it feels like it's made just for him. You know, he kind of went off on his own and you know, he used his inheritance, the money he had to have this place built. So, you know, he wanted to give himself something special when he became uh, successful in it. So here you have it. I really like the way it turned out. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. And now we're gonna go ahead and check out the other area of the in that we did not check out the part with the stairs that go up so here we are we're gonna go ahead and make our way up these stairs here and now we come to another kind of guest room or kind of a, a, a grand room living room kind of area solar or wherever you want to call it and it's basically I like to think that this place is um, reserved for maybe a special someone a very rich noble or merchant that would generally like to rent this whole floor out for his own purpose and his own use as you see we have a nice big fireplace in the center we have some nice uh, accommodating seating as always and another balcony if we open that door we have another balcony here that gives our whoever will be staying on this floor nice views of the city we have plenty of windows we have some tables where some servants or whoever's working at this uh, inn and tavern can bring up some food so whoever would have this floor to themselves would have it pretty much made in my opinion generally a very important person someone with means and probably you know more posh than, than most and and so he would rever reserve this whole room whenever he would have business within the city so we're going to open this door and we come into the actual room that's on this floor again very spacious very luxurious if i do say so myself 
So again, which is why someone very rich would only be able to afford this top floor. So whenever that rich person would again have business within the city, this would be the place he would stay. And he probably would still keep the room on reserve even when he's not staying in the city just uh, to keep anyone else from using it. We have this nice desk over here. We have some storage for some personal belongings, some cabinetry there, as well as this nice cozy window seating um, that can be taken advantage of. Of course, we have a bookshelf for some reading. And we have this, again, a nice cozy bed with this kind of couch off the front of it for some more uh, cozy seating and sitting. Or maybe a squire or a traveling companion could use that as a bed. And of course, no room is complete at the Silver Spoon Tavern and Inn without a place to place some checkers. And also, we have this nice little mirror right here. And to top it off, we have this nice chandelier here hanging. So that's about it, you guys. That's it for the tour. And so I have nothing else to show you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed touring the Silver Spoon Inn and Tavern with me. And I hope you guys got a chance to learn a little bit of lore and a little bit of history on this place. So I really want to say thank you to you all for watching and joining me along while we tour one of the tavern slash inns of Dukesboro. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed it and again got to learn a little bit of history and lore surrounding this place. I really worked hard on it and I really enjoyed and had fun putting this together for you guys. And a real simple way you guys can show me your appreciation is by simply liking and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. And also leave a comment if you guys have any ideas of what I should add next or what kind of buildings or businesses I should uh, add. I really enjoy reading your guys' comments and I will reply to each and every one of them. Again, I really want to say thank you guys for watching the video. This is the Kinder Knight from Dukesboro. And until next we meet, I bid you a farewell.